Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be comparing two of our case studies that we've studied as part of the weather hazards and climate change topic within the GCSC Geography Ed Excel syllabus. Okay, and the two case studies that we've looked at are Hurricane Sandy, which came in 2012 and impacted the USA and Typhoon Haiyan, which occurred in the Philippines in 2013. Okay, Hurricane Sandy is our example of a developed country being impacted by a tropical cyclone and Typhoon Haiyan is the example of a developing country being impacted by a tropical cyclone. Okay, I wanna just do a little bit of recap before we actually look at answering an eight mark question for this part of the paper. Okay, I want you to decide whether this is a response for Hurricane Sandy or whether this was a response for Typhoon Haiyan. Okay, so the Canadian Rivers Institute worked with a number of other NGOs and public agencies to restore beaches for horseshoe and crabs. We already know that this was Hurricane Sandy, so I want you to have that in your head, thinking, and then we're going to look at what the answer is. Okay, if I move that on. Okay, so Hurricane Sandy or Typhoon Haiyan. FAO, which is the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, provided training to farmers to educate them on alternative crops and training to fishermen to rebuild their sustainable boats. Was that Hurricane Sandy or Typhoon Haiyan? Have an answer in your head. Three, two, one. That one was Typhoon Haiyan. Charities such as the Red Cross were involved in providing relief to people in affected areas funded through charity concerts and telethons. Sandy or Haiyan? Three, two, one. That was Hurricane Sandy. An Australian charity called Caritas is paying local people to rebuild emergency shelters and help in the cleanup process. Three, two, one. That one was Typhoon Haiyan. The response from the national government was slow and they did not send in troops until one week after the tropical storm had hit. Have an answer in your head in three, two, one. Typhoon Haiyan. The US government voted in legislation to provide 60.3 billion US dollars in aid to the affected states to help with rebuilding and supporting victims. A few clues in that one. Have an answer in your head. Three, two, one. Hurricane Sandy. Okay, so what I want you to do, take 20 seconds to write down this question. And this is what we're going to be looking at a bit of detail. And then we're going to model a couple of paragraphs to help us answer an eight mark question ready for our exam. So copy that out, pause the video if you need to in three, two, and one. Okay, now you've copied it out, I want you to underline any of the key words that we need to understand to be able to answer that question. Any of the key words in the question. Just take 10 seconds to do that, off you go. Three, two, and one. Okay, so I've done this as well, and I've picked out assess, developing countries, and risk. Okay, so let's define those key terms. So assess means we need to provide arguments for and against the statement made. We're going to look at a structure that we use commonly to try and help us structure our answers to eight mark questions. Developing country is often characterized by a large primary sector, so people working in farming, mining, agriculture, less expensive infrastructure, okay, because they're not spending as much money on those building materials, and they often have poor access to schooling and healthcare, okay? Remember, this is just some examples of what developing country might have and how we might ca characterize it. Not all developing countries are the same, so we can't say that all developing countries have a large primary sector, poor access to schooling and healthcare, okay? But these might be some of the indicators to help us decide whether it's developed or developing country. And finally, risk. So risk is the likelihood that an event will have harmful consequences. Now, back in year nine, we looked at the risk equation for tectonic and climatic hazards. Now, we're particularly interested in what the risk equation might be for a tropical cyclone. So I want you to copy out that risk equation you might want to add the labels that I've already put there for us. Spend 30 seconds just copying that out. Pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, so let's talk about these key definitions, okay? So risk 
remember it's is the likelihood of something having harmful consequences okay and we're thinking about here what are people at risk from what is the environment at risk from okay so i've given an example people are at risk of losing their homes when a tropical cyclone hits the hazard we're talking about the specific event so we're talking about what hazards we are created because of a tropical cyclone and i've put some examples and i've labeled them on our risk equation now vulnerability okay this measures how well a population can deal with a tropical cyclone so how prepared they are okay and factors that increase the likelihood of them being either able or unable to cope okay and i've labeled it i've labeled the equation there all right i want you to spend a minute just adding your own ideas to each part of the risk equation pause the video in three two one Okay, let's see if you got similar ideas to what I'm going to add to this risk equation now. Okay, so people also could be at risk of disease because of that contaminated water. People might lose their jobs, so they're at risk of unemployment as well. I've put another hazard in there, landslide. That's often created as a result of a tropical cyclone. And what's going to affect those people's ability to cope? Well, the type of job they have, remember in the Philippines during Typhoon High End, a lot of people were employed in agriculture and their crops were destroyed, which meant that their whole livelihood and income was taken away from them. Also, their access to healthcare, how easy is it going to be for them to go and get medical help if they're injured or they think they have a specific illness? Also, how quick was the government response? Okay. And what teams and legislation do they have in place to deal with a tropical cyclone? All right. Now, the question is asking us to assess that the following statement. So developing countries are more at risk from tropical storms. So we need to assess whether that's true or not, okay, using the knowledge we have from our case studies. Okay, so if we go back through all right so we're going to see are developing countries more at risk from disease homelessness unemployment all people in developing countries more at risk from that okay so using this risk equation we know that the two tropical cyclones um hurricane sandy and typhoon high and they would they had different magnitudes okay so hurricane sandy was category one whereas typhoon high was category five so we can't really compare um, using that because there were two completely different storms okay and had completely different magnitudes okay but we can think about what makes a population and society more vulnerable so we can actually use this idea of vulnerability to help us understand this question a little bit more and how that's going to make people more or less at risk if they're living in a developing country such as the philippines okay so something else to think about before we actually try and model this question now the usa is our developed country where hurricane sandy occurred philippines is our developing country where typhoon high end occurred now i can see from this table sorry that the gdp per capita is significantly different between the usa and the philippines so this means that people in the usa are more likely to be able to rebuild their homes after a hur after hurricane sandy hit okay whereas people in the philippines are less likely to be able to afford to leave and maybe buy a new home somewhere else or rebuild their own because they're actually learning less money per year okay and that's just an example of using those development indicators that were familiar from the global development paper and how this might make people more at risk in the developing country okay so how do we write a perfect eight mark evaluate or assess question now thinking back to those exam questions that have been modeled by your teacher in the class what structure have we used have a have a little think write that structure down if you can remember it or have it in your head i'm going to ask you um, to see if that matches the one we're going to show you in a minute okay three two one so we've got peak peak and our c for conclusion so our peak means point evidence explain counter or compare 
And this is the structure we use, two, par two peak paragraphs and a conclusion to be able to write that perfect eight mark assess question. And that's what we're going to use here. Okay, so thinking back to that question about developing countries being more at risk from tropical cyclones, we need to think about, well, how, what is the actual examiner looking for us to do? So we need to provide an argument, which is our point for why developing countries are more at risk from either death, injury, disease, homelessness, or unemployment. E.g., for example, what makes developing countries more vulnerable, okay? Give a specific example. What case study evidence can we use to show when this happens? Explain why this made people more at risk from a tropical cyclone. What did people not have access to? What made it more difficult for them to survive? Provide a counter argument which either explains why this is not always true or why people in developed countries are less at risk. We can use evidence from a case study to help us. Okay, so what I want to do is actually plan my paragraph first. Okay, and this is going to show us and help us structure our paragraph our two paragraphs at a later point. Okay, so I'm going to go through and have a think. What makes developing countries more at risk? Well, I can remember from high end that the government response was slow. Okay, so government response is slow. Okay, we might just put is slow, okay, because we're talking about developing countries and then we're going to use evidence. So we have Typhoon High End as our developing country case study. And we can say that the government response was one week after it hit. Okay, I'm just making little notes to help me actually structure my paragraph. Explain, how am I gonna explain this? Well, this means that the people had limited access to resources. Okay, and I'm, I can remember what those resources are. It could be food, water supplies, shelter, medication. What's my counter argument? Well, I can remember the FEMA organization. So they, in the USA, during Sandy, they actually evacuated people and provided meals okay in brackets i remember that's 14 million okay so i've just made some notes there and they're going to help me structure this paragraph okay so now i'm going to model one peak paragraph for this question where we're assessing whether or not developing countries are more at risk from tropical cyclones Okay, so I'm gonna model this on the right-hand side in our Word document for us. So let's just make the font a little bit bigger. And then we can have a look. So my government response is slow. So I'm gonna use my plan where I have the point, evidence, evidence, and counter argument to help me look at the success criteria, which I need to include. And then let's see if we can model a good paragraph to try and answer this question. Okay, so I'm looking at my point here. Government response was slow. So I need to say that some would argue that Developing countries are at a greater risk from tropical cyclones, okay? That's just my sentence starter, okay? Let's see if I can spell this correctly, okay? Now I need to say why. Because their government are not as effective organizing and preparing a response team okay so that's my point now i need some evidence for example during typhoon Haiyan in the philippines i'm using my evidence here okay Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines in 2013, the government was slow in responding and did not send troops in to set up evacuation sites, help the injured 
and clear the building damage until one week after the storm hit. Okay, so that's I'm giving examples of what happened. And then I need to explain, okay? This contributed to the deaths of around 6,000 to 7,000 people. So I'm including one of the impacts of the trop of Typhoon High in there. I meant that, so what does this mean? This is my explanation term. I meant that for the 1.9 million, so I'm, using, I'm still using that clear and specific evidence in my writing who were made homeless so the one point who, who were made homeless, I meant that for the 1.9 million people who were made homeless, they had, meant for the 1.9 million people who were made homeless, let's add in people there, 9 million people who were made homeless, comma, they had limited access or no access to shelter food clean water and medication and therefore were at a higher risk from disease okay so i'm giving you really detailed explanation there and then on my counter argument so i might start start that with on the other hand come up in developed countries such as the USA, the government are more prepared. So that's my counter argument, then I need to explain that. For example, FEMA helped evacuate. So I'm using my plan there to help me structure this last bit. Evacuate people before Hurricane Sandy hit in 2012 and provided 14 million meals to those affected and explain that this meant that people were less at risk so i'm linking it back to the question were less at risk from death injury and disease okay so there's one paragraph modeled for us trying to answer this question so if we go back to our powerpoint we've used that plan and this success criteria to have a structure of paragraph and here's our answer so using this success criteria we can see that first i've answered the point then in the green I've given my evidence with specific example, which is our case study of Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. Then I've explained how that impacted the people and made people more at risk from things such as disease. And then I've provided my counter argument and linked it back to the question using our case study in the USA and saying how they were more prepared. You see that in purple. Okay, what I want you to do now is have a go at doing that second paragraph on your own. So I want you to actually think about what your point might be, what your evidence is going to be, what your explanations, how you're going to explain that, and then what counter argument you're going to use. Okay, so you can use your books to help you here where you've actually gone through these case studies and then also the videos on Hurricane Sandy and Typhoon High in which you're on YouTube. I want you to spend around five minutes trying to have a go at that on your own. And then we're going to have a look at how you can actually assess your own work. Okay, so pause the video, use those sentence starters on the screen if you need to in three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. So here I have an example of a paragraph that you might have wrote or is very similar to what you've done. Okay. So let's read this through. During Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines in 2013, major rice, corn, and sugar producing areas were destroyed. 
This meant that farmers had lost their food source and money, whilst the country had lost one of the big products it could sell to other countries. However, some would argue that those in developed countries are also at risk of job losses. During Hurricane Sandy, there are around 30,000 job losses. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to spend three minutes trying to write down how that meets the success criteria, how it doesn't meet the success criteria, and how we could improve it using some of the terms that we've used throughout this topic. Okay, I want you to spend three minutes just having a go saying and answering those two questions. Pause the video in three, two, and one. So we can actually have a look at this paragraph again and against our success criteria here. Okay, so does it provide an argument for why developing countries are more at risk? Well, it doesn't actually tell us how developing countries are more vulnerable. Okay, so we need to open it with an argument that actually says what makes those countries more at risk from tropical cyclones what makes developing countries more at risk from disease injury homelessness or unemployment does it give a specific example yes it's using typhoon Haiyan in the philippines and it's also telling me how the major rice corn and sugar producing areas were destroyed okay and then it goes on to explain that we can see it by the sentence starting this meant that and explains what happened to farmers and what the impact was there and what they were at risk from now, the counter argument, it starts to do this, okay? So it starts to tell me what, and compare Typhoon High to Hurricane Sandy, but it doesn't explain, it doesn't actually give me an explanation, okay? There's no this meant that as a result. It just tells me that there are 30,000 job losses. That doesn't tell me or explain why that makes developed countries more at risk okay it needs to link it back to that question all right but it does provide me with some evidence there by stating that there are 30,000 job losses also if we think about some of the terms food source and money that might we might have actually been better to use the term income this part of the country okay we could have actually said the agricultural sector so where people work in farming Okay, big products it could sell to other countries. Remember this, when a country sells its products to another country, those products are called exports. So we could have actually put major exports in there to make it sound more like a geographer was writing it. Okay, so you've written one paragraph. Now I want you to spend two minutes planning what to write in your last paragraph and then spend five minutes writing your answer and then finally make sure you include, include a conclusion at the end. That might be started by saying, to conclude, I think that developed countries are more or less at risk from so tropical cyclones than developed countries, and then say why. Okay, so that's how we can think through a eight mark question for this part of the paper, comparing the two case studies of Hurricane Sandy and Typhoon Haiyan.